Hey everybody, welcome back to One T's Garage. My name is Elliot. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace a fuel pump on my 2003 Chevy Silverado. It's the easiest way to do a fuel pump on these trucks without dropping the tank. You actually raise the bed and it's a lot easier than you think. It's only like eight bolts and the bed will raise up and you can gain easy access to the fuel tank, the top of the fuel tank and just pop that uh, fuel pump and the whole assembly out very easily. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that today. So let's get to it. Welcome to my garage and my project truck. So what's happening is I'm getting a low fuel light almost all the time. Um, sometimes it goes back up to full and uh, but it's obviously not working right. So the fuel level sensor is bad on this truck. Um, and instead of just doing the fuel level sensor, since I have to take the fuel pump off anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the fuel pump. It's only like, uh, I think uh, from 80, 80 bucks. So I'm gonna be replacing the whole fuel pump assembly, which comes with the fuel level sensor. So I'm going to do that today. I'll show you how to do it. And it's the easiest method, in my opinion. Um, so let's get after it. All right, so to get this bed uh, jacked up out of the way, um, there's eight bolts you got to take off. And it goes from the frame to the bed. And uh, let me show you where those are at. <clears throat> so you go up under here. There's one right there. You can see that one. There's another one right there. I already took it off. Um, and then come to the back. And it's like right here. It's another one. And there's actually actually an access hole right here um, to access it. And then there's another one right here. This one's broken off actually um, on this side. It got rusty. And uh, so those are the four on this side. You got another side. And there's another one right there. I already got it loosened. This one right there. And then the same on the back. There's some back there. So what you wanna wanna do is loosen and then only loosen the bolts on your passenger side. So on the passenger side, you'll loosen the bolts about three quarters of the way, um, but keep them in. Um, and then the bolts on the driver's side, you're gonna take out completely. Just take them all the way out. And uh, that way you can jack up this side of the bed um, all the way up so that you'll be able to access the fuel tank. Um, the fuel tank is on this side, uh, right along the frame rail. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of right there. Um, okay, so I've got the bolts off on my driver's side, um, all four bolts on the driver's side. I've got all my four bolts on the passenger side loosened, about 75% loosened. Um, now I got the jack, as you can see, under here and uh, you can kind of see where I have it up on the bed frame the rail that goes across it's a good place you can actually jack it right here too um, as long as these two uh, supports are strong and not bent and that will actually lift it too but you don't want to damage um, your your uh, body panel so better to do it this way so get it like a long 4x4 or two 2x4s two put together and put it on the jack and then what you do is just jack it up um, like that um, and I'll continue to go up with it here in a minute um, it's real important to not have like a toolbox it has the truck has a toolbox on it um, the weight of it will not 
work out too well for doing this doing the fuel tank um, this way um, it's really hard to jack it up and you can sometimes bend something so you don't want to do it that way if you can help it right before you get too far jacking the bed up you're going to want to take off these uh, clips for the filler neck so this one you just pry, open, pry out the screwdriver and then the other ones are T30 Torx bit. And you just take those off. T30. And uh, get the filler neck to be loose. So now you're free to jack it up the rest of the way. All right, so once you get it high enough um, with the jack, uh, the bed's nice and high. We got enough access. Right there, you can see the fuel pump assembly, and you want enough room where you can get pull that thing all the way out. It's a uh, it's about 10 inches tall, so you want about 10 inches of room there, um, so you can pull that thing straight up. Once you got the enough room. Then put some blocks up under here to support it, and then you can uh, you can lower your your jack here and take this out, so you'll have easy access and uh, easy way to work on the fuel tank or the fuel pump. So as you can see, oh, it's pretty easy up in here to get to it makes it a lot easier a lot better than dropping the tank um, and then just make sure you got it blocked up good with the jack stands or blocks of wood or something so it doesn't fall anyway or anything working on it the bed's not super heavy anyway but um, you don't want it falling on you because it would hurt could get you trapped in there So you take these clips off right here. This one has a little slide protector. You gotta kind of pry the protector out a little bit and then push down on it and wiggle it out. Sometimes it's best just to pull that protector all the way off. And then you can get a better grip on there. And that pulls right up. Put the harness aside. Then you got these uh, these clips for the fuel lines. And they've got two little clips on either side. You gotta squeeze together. Um, so kind of wiggle them around a little bit. And get them loose and then you squeeze the clips together sometimes it helps to pull in a little bit squeeze the clips together and then push back out sometimes the screwdriver will help and sometimes they'll still have pressure on them so they might scorch you a little bit be helpful to wear some safety glasses so you don't get it in your eye. Um, you don't want to break these, but you have to squeeze in both sides and then pull the line out. And then the middle one is a little trickier. You still got to squeeze in both sides, but it's a different type of clip. Um, 
and that's really just the evap line for emissions but you don't want to break it so you gotta squeeze it together and then push out same same thing only the clips a little more aggravating Okay, got that one off. So now that everything's loose, all the all the pipes. Um, now you're gonna let me get the flashlight. So if you can see the clip right there, it's right there. You gotta push out and then put your screwdriver in there right in that groove and then you're going to hammer that around so this thing turns and it'll release so I'll show you how to do that in just a second just put your screwdriver there hammer it until it releases so once it's released this little circular metal holder will pop off of the tabs and you can take that completely off and then this whole assembly will come out so you come straight up and it'll compress a little bit so compress it. Compress it a little and then you can finagle it out of here. I might have to jack it up a little bit farther, I don't know. Alright, now that I have it jacked up a little higher on these blocks, I got a secondary block just in case it falls. Um, so yeah, I got halfway out, got a little more room now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out the rest of the way. Let the fuel drain a little bit back into the tank. And then it'll come on out. Alright, so as you can see, I got the fuel fuel pump out of there. And here it is. Oh, you can see right here. This is the fuel level sensor. And that's what uh, makes my uh, fuel gauge go up and down. As you can see, the contacts are worn out on it, right in there, where it contacts the little resistor. They're totally worn out, and that's what's causing my issue. I um, don't know if you can see that or not, but right there. There's two contacts and one of them's completely worn out and the other one's not in the best of shape either. So that's what's calling, causing my low fuel uh, low fuel indicator to come on. And uh, causing the code to set also in my check engine light to come on. Uh, there's two types of these fuel pumps. One has one connector and one has also a pressure sensor on it. This one has the two connectors, so I had to pull this out before I went to the parts store to get my part to make sure I got the right one. So it is the two connector, and I'm going to be going to the parts store, and I'll be right back with the new part. Alright, so I've got this thing out of the package now. What I'm going to do is install the float. All you have to do is get this little float and stick it right there in the little hole 
slide it in the hole and then it just snaps right in. So just push it in, hear it snap, and now it's good to go. So the float for the fuel level sensor is installed. And now you want to put on the uh, gasket. I use I use the old one because the new one is usually thicker and it's uh, not as worn in. So it makes it a lot easier to go back on if you use the old one. So I took the old one off the the, um, the old fuel pump and I'm gonna install it on the new pump here. Just slide it on there like that. <clears throat> Going on up to the top, and you're good to go. Um, this thing does come with a harness, also. If you have the old style connector, um, would be a square instead of a kind of a straight across. So then you'd have to install this pigtail harness. But it's our mine's already got the pigtail harness on, and I guess it's had a fuel pump on there before. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna throw this in there. So I'm ready to go. So one other thing you gotta do is you gotta take off these little clips and transfer them to the other uh, pump. So basically you just bend them backwards and they come slide right off. Hopefully they don't break on you. Just a little clip like that. And these ones are pretty dirty but um, there's just two of them, one on either side. The other one has the clip on the hose. So you just pull it off. And then slide those on the, on the other pump. Alright, so as you can see, I've got it, the fuel pump back in place. Um, there's this metal or little ring that you use a screwdriver to take off when you're taking it out. You just put it right against this tab. Um, slide this tab kind of out, that little plastic piece, and put your screw out right there and tap it until it turns counterclockwise and comes off out of these grooves here. Um, just put it back on, you just do the opposite, turn it clockwise, push down on the thing evenly, and turn this ring clockwise until it locks into this thing here. You'll probably have to get started by pushing down and grabbing like the edge of the tab and then you'll put your screwdriver like right here and hammer it um, so it turns clockwise and then once it locks in it'll lock in with this little plastic tab so that it can't come loose then after that you just slide your connectors on make sure the they click and the tabs are connected real well and make sure your uh, connectors are tight. You slide those back on as well, and you're good to go. It's all done. I just have to lower the bed back down. That does it for my fuel pump replacement video for the 03 Chevy Silverado. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful for you guys. Um, it's definitely the easiest way I've found to do a fuel pump on a Silverado. Uh, just jack up that bed, makes it way easier. Um, leave me a comment if you got any questions. Uh, if this is helpful for you, please leave me a thumbs up. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Uh, let me know if, uh, if there's any way I can be more helpful on, uh, on my videos. And I'm about to edit this thing and post it online. So thanks for watching and talk to you all later. Bye.